They say the most dangerous thing in the world isn't a weapon. It's an idea that threatens to change everything. I know that I'm not going to live long. And that's why I put every day, every hour, every minute into building, into growing. On July 9th, 2025, a terrified young inventor named Julian Brown looked directly into his camera and whispered words that would be his last public statement. I'm certainly under attack right now. Screen recorded this. Within hours, he vanished without a trace. Julian had done something that should have made him a hero. He'd figured out how to turn plastic waste into fuel. But instead of billion dollar deals, he got black helicopters circling his home at night, secret spotlights tracking his every move, false accusations to federal agencies, and then silence. His 1.7 million followers watched in horror as their daily updates stopped. His mother would only say he was safe, but couldn't reveal where. The police claimed they weren't even investigating. It was as if someone very powerful wanted Julian Brown to disappear, and they got their wish. But here's the chilling part. This has happened before. 27 years earlier, another inventor claimed he could revolutionize fuel. Stanley Meyer said he could run a car on water. He was meeting with investors when he suddenly clutched his throat, ran from a restaurant, and collapsed in the parking lot. His final words, they poisoned me. Two inventors, two revolutionary fuel technologies, two mysterious fates. Is this coincidence or is there something darker at play? A pattern of brilliant minds being silenced when they dare to challenge the most powerful industry on earth? What you're about to hear isn't just another conspiracy theory. It's a documented trail of suppression, sabotage, and secrets that leads to one terrifying question. What happens when your invention is worth more than your life? Hello strangers. Welcome back to The Strange Bar and Grill. I'm your host, JP. Today's topic is one I've seen floating around online everywhere. I was hesitant at first about making a video on this topic, but after I started researching the story anyway, I really kind of went down this rabbit hole, and I think I have some details that others may have missed. So let's jump right in and start connecting the dots. Julian Brown wasn't your typical college dropout. At just 18, he taught himself welding in his parents' garage and became obsessed with solving two problems at once, plastic pollution and expensive fuel. His solution, a machine he called a microwave pyrolysis reactor, basically a high-tech oven that could melt plastic waste and transform it into gasoline, diesel, and even jet fuel. He founded a company called Nature Jab with a simple mission, in plastic waste by turning it into energy. What made Brown different was his radical transparency. While most companies keep their innovation secret, he documented every step online, sharing failures and successes with his growing audiences. I believe that doing this allows people to be a part of my journey, he explained, and maybe that's the issue here. Maybe he shouldn't have shared with everyone. He avoided venture capital, preferring grants and grassroots support through a GoFundMe that eventually raised over $30,000. The crazy part of all this is the technology was solid. It actually worked. When ASAP Labs in Washington tested his fuel in May of 2025, they found it burned cleaner than regular diesel. But many sources are saying, although the fuel burns cleaner, the byproduct of making this type of fuel using this method is inefficient and causes more pollution actually. But I'll get to more of that in the theory section at the end of the video, so stick around for that. Reddit co-founder Alexis Ohanian was so impressed he gave Brown a $100,000 grant. Forbes featured him. By 2024, Brown had built five working prototypes and successfully powered a car with fuel made from old plastic bottles. But then things started to get weird. In May of 2024, one of his reactors exploded. The blast left Brown with second degree burns on his ankles and feet, requiring surgery. He had to move his entire operation to a remote location in Alabama, four hours from home. He started sleeping in his van, dealing with crushing heat, humidity, and mosquitoes while working on his machines. He had partnered with the Moses West Foundation and was planning something big, but that's when strange things started to happen. On July 3rd of 2025, Julian Brown's Instagram posts took a dark turn. He claimed black helicopters with spotlights were following him. 
circling his location six times at night with their radar transponders turned off. Look, spotlight right at me. I don't know what's going on. This is the third time this whole country's been here. Look, it ain't a spotlight. So loud though, like I can't even go to sleep. All right, so for those of you who have not seen my stories on Instagram, two nights ago I was sleeping in Alabama where I work with my reactor and there was a helicopter that flew really low and had a spotlight at 10 o'clock at night, flew over me, shined the spotlight right into my windshield, then flew away, came back, did it again, came back, did it again, came back and did it again. It came five times and this helicopter was flying so low I could feel the blades in my body. And in one chilling video, he said, I know that I'm not going to live long. And that's why I put every day, every hour, every minute into building, into growing. He talked about being under attacked by mysterious groups and mentioned being falsely accused and reported to the EPA and the IRS. His final post on July 9th begged followers to screen record this as if he knew he might disappear. And then he did. His last Instagram story allegedly leaked his own driver's license before quickly deleting, adding another bizarre twist to an already strange case. For over two weeks, nothing. No posts, no updates, complete radio silence from someone who had been posting almost daily. Here's what makes it even stranger. While working on Nature Jab, Julian was also simultaneously launching a side business called Jab Aroma, selling all natural sunscreen and bug repellent. He posted videos criticizing conventional sunscreen's petroleum derived chemicals and proudly showed off his chemical free formula with ingredients you can actually pronounce. Some said the timing was bizarre. They asked why push skincare products while you're insisting you're under attack and might not live long. Most fans thought he was just trying to stay normal despite the chaos. If you have inventions, why not release them? Others wondered if it was all an elaborate marketing stunt. His mother, Nia Brown, eventually broke her silence to say Julian was safe, but couldn't reveal his location for security reasons. The Atlanta police said they weren't even investigating a missing persons case. So where was Julian? In hiding? Under protection? Or had the pressure of fame and dangerous experiments simply become too much? Brown had mentioned that EPA and IRS were after him. Some followers whispered about big oil silencing another threat to their empire. Others compared his case to other black inventors who had mysteriously vanished after challenging the status quo. After all, if you could really turn trash into fuel, wouldn't that destroy the oil industry? Yes, it would. Or maybe they're trying to make him look crazy to discredit him as well. While Julian vanished, his company Nature Jab didn't. The website remained active, his social media accounts stayed up, and his GoFundMe continued collecting donations. It was as if the inventor had disappeared, but his invention lived on, frozen in time, waiting for his return. But this was not the first time an alternative fuel inventor had dealt with strange circumstances. Back in the 1990s, Stanley Meyer from Ohio claimed he invented something even more revolutionary, a car that could run on water. Meyer's device supposedly split water into hydrogen and oxygen using a special water fuel cell. He drove around in a dune buggy painted with water-powered car on the side. Appearing on TV shows and giving demonstrations at colleges, he claimed his invention could make any car run on water instead of gasoline. Again, this would be a huge blow to the industry. The oil companies must have been terrified, right? Because on March 20th, 1998, Meyer was meeting with two Belgian investors at a Cracker Barrel restaurant. Now, that's his first mistake because he went to a Cracker Barrel. I went to a Cracker Barrel one time when I was in high school. I didn't even know that's where we were going. We just pulled up and I was like, the name of this restaurant is wild. People were looking at us like we were crazy. Anyway, I know I'm getting off topic here, but I said, give me an extra steak knife. I'm sizing people up, planning my escape route. I didn't even know it at the time, but they were actually accused of all kinds of racist stuff. They would call black people Canadians as like some kind of code word. But anyway, I'm digressing from the point. Let's start from the beginning here. On March 20th, 1998, Myers was meeting with two Belgian investors at a Cracker Barrel. He took a sip of cranberry juice, suddenly grabbed his throat and ran outside. As he collapsed in the parking lot, witnesses heard him gasp, they poisoned me. He was dead within minutes. 
And these aren't the only cases. Tom Ogle invented a vapor carburetor in the 1970s that could supposedly get over 100 miles per gallon in a Ford Galaxy. University professors verified it worked. Ogle died at 26 years old from a drug and alcohol overdose after being shot earlier that year. Coincidence? Maybe. But what do you think? And what about Aaron Salter Jr., a former Buffalo officer and scientist, spent the past decade developing a car engine field on water. He documented the entire process on his YouTube channel. Unfortunately, Aaron would be shot at a grocery store where he worked as a security guard during a racially motivated mass shooting. Salter spent the last moments of his life firing back at the gunmen who took nine other lives that fatal day. His acts perhaps slowed down the alleged terrorist and minimized the number of victims. Some say this wasn't a coincidence and that it was an orchestrated hit on Aaron made to look like a racially motivated shooting. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments section. So there is a disturbing pattern here. Inventors create devices that threaten oil profits. They gain attention. Then they either die mysteriously, disappear, or their inventions simply vanish. Is big oil really assassinating inventors or is something else going on? So here's where things get interesting because we don't have to guess whether oil companies suppress alternative technologies. We have proof they do. In the 1970s and 80s, every major oil company bought up solar technology companies. Shell, Mobil, Exxon, BP. They all acquired solar patents and companies. Then mysteriously, they abandoned them all by 2010. Even more damning, when Chevron Texaco bought GM's electric car battery patents in 2000, they immediately sued Toyota to stop making electric RAV4s. They literally used patent law to try and kill the electric car at that time. Internal documents from 1982 show Exxon scientists accurately predicted today's climate crisis. While publicly denying climate change, they were privately planning for a warmer world. They spent millions funding climate denial while knowing the truth. So yes, big oil absolutely suppresses competing technologies. They use lawyers and patents, and I wouldn't put it past them to also use hired assassins. Sounds crazy, but hell, I've seen people getting shot over $20, so that's not too far-fetched for me. Because what's $20 to billions and trillions of dollars, right? But here's the twist nobody talks about. Stanley Meyer's water car was tested by court-appointed experts in 1996. Three independent scientists examined his devices thoroughly. Their conclusion? It was a complete fraud. Meyer's revolutionary water fuel cell was just regular electrolysis, basic high school science. They say it used more energy to split the water than you could ever get back by burning the hydrogen. The court found him guilty of gross and egregious fraud. They said he scammed investors out of money with a device that violated the laws of physics. The coroner who examined Myers' body found he died of a brain aneurysm. He had high blood pressure, not poison. No conspiracy, just a con man whose luck ran out. What if that's exactly what Big Oil wants us to think? Is it really past these corporations to, to try to discredit someone, call them crazy, hire the experts to do these tests, say they're crazy, and... Their hands are clean of this situation, and no one's looking at them anymore. I don't think it's too crazy. We see it all the time. But with that, let's take a look at some possible theories and think about this a little further. So theory number one, the selective targeting hypothesis. So maybe oil companies only target investors with real working technologies. Let's say Myers was a fraud, and he wasn't a real threat to the major oil companies. So they let the courts handle him. But Brown's plastic to fuel tech actually works. It's confirmed. Tom Ogle's carburetor was verified by professors. We know for a fact it was confirmed and it worked. Big Oil would have the resources to verify that work by these inventors and have the ability to take them out. So let's say Stanley Meyer was a fraud, but the oil companies still believed he may be onto something. How hard would it be for them to get rid of him and cover it up? How hard would it be for them to threaten Julian? and cover it up. How hard would it be for them to kill Tom Ogle? He was shot at, and then he had died of a alcohol and drug overdose. But what do you think? Does that sound like a cover up to you? Or are we reaching here? So theory number two, the mental breakdown pattern. Could Julian be suffering from a mental break? Working alone on revolutionary technology is incredibly stressful, I would assume. Julian suffered an explosion, worked in isolation, and suddenly gained 1.7 million followers. 
That pressure could break anyone. Maybe these inventors aren't being targeted. Is it possible they're cracking under pressure and seeing conspiracies where none exist? Is that even possible? I mean, black helicopters shining their light in your face five times doesn't seem like nothing to me. It definitely sounds like something. This brings me to theory number three. Could the government have played a role in stifling Julian? So here's a verified fact. The US government has 5,784 patents under secrecy orders as of 2017. The Invention Secrecy Act allows them to classify any patent that might threaten national security, including energy technologies. What if the real suppression comes from the government, not corporations? Julian did mention the EPA and IRS were after him. All it would take is for the government to say that this technology threatens national security, and like that, they can shelf it all. In theory number four, the useful idiot strategy. What if oil companies deliberately let frauds like Myers operate publicly? Again, this hinders on if you believe Myers was a fraud here. Let's just play devil's advocate here and say Myers was a fraud, right? Every fake water car makes real alternative fuel inventors look crazy by association. It's the perfect cover. Discredit the entire field while you quietly buy up real technologies through shell companies. Again, this hinders on Stanley Myers being an actual fraud as they claim. Could it be that someone from these big companies reached out to Julian and is talking deals to buy his technology? If so, they would buy it and shelf it, right? Then they would debunk the technology and call it a hoax. And this brings me to my last and final theory, the toxic fumes theory. So here's something that nobody's really talking about. Brown was melting plastic in makeshift reactors, often in confined spaces like his van. Burning plastic releases incredibly toxic chemicals, benzene, toluene, styrene, and dozens of carcinogens. These neurotoxins can cause paranoia, hallucinations, and severe mental health issues. What if Brown wasn't being hunted at all? What if he was slowly poisoning himself with his own invention? Think about it. He worked alone, and from what I can see on his Instagram, doesn't appear to be following any industrial safety protocols and admitted to sleeping next to his reactors. The clean fuel he produced might have burned clean, but the process of making it filled his workspace with invisible toxic clouds. Could it be that those black helicopters, those mysterious attacks, are just classic signs of chemical-induced psychosis? But what do you guys think about that one? Let me know in the comments section. And I know you're tired of me saying that, but <laughs> let me know in the comment section. So what really happened to Julian Brown? Is he hiding from corporate hitmen or having a mental health crisis? Was his technology so revolutionary that powerful forces made him disappear? Or did a brilliant young man simply crack under the pressure of fame, isolation, and dangerous experiments? I personally think someone got to him and said something to him, and he's probably fearing for his life. But that's my opinion. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot to go on in this case, but here's what we know for sure. Oil companies have systematically suppressed alternative energy technologies for decades. They've used patents, lawsuits, and market manipulation to maintain their monopoly. They've lied about climate change while planning for it internally. All that says to me is that these mega corporations are scummy and I don't trust them and I don't put anything past them. All I know is that Julian Brown remains missing from public view. His mother maintains he is safe but won't reveal his location. His plastic to fuel technology, verified by independent labs, sits unused. The world continues to burn fossil fuels, and somewhere perhaps another inventor is working alone in a garage about to change everything or about to disappear. But all right guys, that's gonna be it for today. Let me know what you guys think of this one in the comment section.